83 years ago, the history of FC Barcelona changed in fundamental ways. It wasn't because of a star signing, a new stadium, or a trophy win. Instead, it was the death of President Josep Suñol on August 6, 1936, that reinforced the club's Catalan identity in ways that persist until today. Today, we're talking tragedy, war, and a man that should not be forgotten. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is a Barcelona Podcast YouTube exclusive. To be so remembered in death, it usually means that you have lived a life worth remembering. Born to a wealthy Catalan family in 1898, Josep Suñol y was always in a position to have that life. He spent his early life during the days of the Miguel Primo de Rivera dictatorship with his nationalist family, living in a time where the use of the Catalan language and any sight of the Sinera was prohibited. Suñol's affiliations could be seen as more political than sporting. As a member of Asio Catalana, a left-wing group known for its Catalan nationalism and social liberalism, he built upon his family of political militant's values by further entrenching himself in the organizations that pushed the Catalan identity. In 1928, he became a club director at FC Barcelona and served as a Catalan Football Federation president for the 1929-1930 season. In 1930, he also founded a weekly paper called La Rumbla, which became known for its coverage of both sports and politics to significant degrees. The newspaper was located near the Canaletas Fountain, near Plaza Catalunya, the same place where Cules now joined together to celebrate a trophy. He was an advocate for a sport e ciutadania, an idea that said the opposite of what many athletes are told today, that sports should take on and be at the forefront of political and cultural activity, as opposed to the modern athlete that is told to remain apolitical so as not to isolate fans. 1930 was also the year that Juan Gamper committed suicide, a black cloud that would hang over the club for some time. This didn't stop Suñol from continuing his push to unite sport and politics, particularly during the Second Spanish Republic, which began in April of 1931, following the end of the dictatorship. He was elected FC Barcelona president on July 2, 1935, given the specific task of sorting out some of the club's financial problems. That season, he was able to close the books at a profit, despite the dire ramifications left by the stock market crash in the United States. The team won the Catalan Championship in 1936, capturing success on the field as well during his brief time in charge. His presidency and his life were short-lived, however. At this point, we discuss his death, coming just outside Madrid after a trip to Valencia. It should be noted that Madrid was still a Republican stronghold at that point in the Spanish Civil War, which had begun just two weeks prior on July 17, 1936. Unknown to Suñol, his car entered a zone in Sierra de Guadarrama that was controlled by Franco's troops. Without a trial, he and the rest of his car were shot dead right there on August 6, 1936. A week later, the news of his death finally reached Barcelona, and the club was sent into a period of disarray. Suñol was always political, but now, FC Barcelona and their stadium Le Corte were directly involved in the Spanish Civil War. Mesqueon club, indeed. So there you have it, a figure that never saw the field, but has still had a lasting impact at FC Barcelona. For more on this topic, check out some of the links down in the description, and keep checking this channel for more videos like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, Forza Barca!